XRP has had a crazy roller coaster range in terms of its price since the ruling on the SEC versus Ripple case. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what it's correlating with that might give a bit of a warning in terms of its future price, what it could be correlated to, and when it absolutely could skyrocket to new all-time highs. Because there is a lot of things that a lot of people forgot about since the last Bitcoin bull market that I'm going to talk about. Also, we're going to be talking about the appeal and the SEC potentially appealing this case, the verdict of Judge Torres' ruling and decision in the SEC versus Ripple case. Well, John Deaton breaks it down and talks about if and when a decision could actually happen and if it could affect XRP. Hey everyone, my name is Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. And right now on this channel, we are talking about the Ripple versus the SEC case, but I'm also talking about cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if any or all these topics interest you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, join the Late Night Grind community. And if you do a couple things, I'd appreciate it. Smash the thumbs up button, watch this video all the way to the end. Those really are some of the two best things you can do to support a YouTube channel. So if you do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, guys. Let's jump into it. So let's first start off by talking about what John Deaton has tweeted out, and that is a response to someone talking about an appeal that the SEC appears that they might make in this case that they just lost, or essentially lost the important part, to Ripple. So it recently came up in another case the SEC is litigating that it is using the decision that was handed down in the Ripple versus SEC case, and they were discussing what they might do with it in terms of an appeal because it looks like they were nodding to the fact that they said they were going to appeal because according to some of the legal analysts, it appears that the SEC wants to go ahead and appeal this decision. Well, some said, well, just because they said they may appeal it doesn't mean they actually will because of course they can still lose that appeal. Now, the other part of this process is the length of time that it's actually going to take and the fact that even if they do appeal it, they could still lose yet again and this is what John Deaton is predicting. And in this tweet that I'm about to read, John Deaton is referencing where somebody said an appeal is actually, or could actually be a setback for XRP. Well, John's answer was to the contrary, and here's what he said. An appeal is not even close to being a setback. First, it'll be two years from now before a decision is issued by the Second Circuit if it is appealed. The Torres decision is the law until then, at least in the Second Circuit. Second, even if the Second Circuit said Torres was wrong regarding her application of the third Howey factor, which I predict they won't, which of course the Howey test is what the SEC typically uses to determine if something might be a security. That doesn't mean that the SEC wins on programmatic sales, which is all the sales on the exchanges that Ripple did with XRP. All that happens is that Torres then applies the other two factors and could still likely rule the exact same way concluding that the SEC didn't satisfy the common enterprise factor, which is a more difficult factor to meet, in John's opinion, than the third factor. Don't let anyone underestimate the significance of this win for XRP and XRP holders and for Ripple. And he's 100% right. It will be a long time coming if, if and in fact there would be any appeal. Would it hurt XRP holders? Would it hurt the price of XRP? Well, only if it was appealed and several years from now, it was determined that Judge Torres' decision-making was absolutely wrong. How she used the Howey factor in determining if XRP could be, a, uh, could be a security was wrong. And for all those factors to happen, it would it is highly unlikely. That's not to say it couldn't happen. So if you're an XRP holder, I would say it is highly unlikely that this would be overturned in any way. Now you see that all of the exchanges adding and relisting XRP and giving support to XRP, the XRP ledger, all over projects, all over the place, it's highly likely that this won't be overturned, especially since it could take several years and Gary Gensler might not even be the head of the SEC at that point, especially if he becomes a big time liability for the Democratic Party. Remember, Gary Gensler was handpicked by Joe Biden to lead the SEC, and if something like this continues to hurt, especially institutional investors, and they continue to go down rabbit holes that go against what big guys like BlackRock are now going into and saying, hold on, we want to jump into cryptocurrency too. Well, it is unlikely, in my opinion, that Gary Gensler would be sticking around for the long term. And in a humorous note, Stuart Alderati, who is Ripple's general counsel, likened Gary Gensler to a flat earther. And then, yes, that's someone who actually knows what's true, but still continues to push their narrative regardless, regardless even knowing that they're wrong. Kind of funny. Okay, so now with that being the backdrop, and XRP getting its regulatory clarity in the United States, it continues to push forward. I just saw a headline that Ripple saw a massive spike in XRP usage and 
a spike in hiring over in Singapore. So as it continues to do that, we saw XRP spike up to 95 cents, it pulled back, it settled in at about 82 cents, then saw a little bit of a downtrend to where it's at right now, which is approximately 75 cents. Now, I wanted to talk about a correlation that somebody wrote about the correlation of XRP's price and what it did back in the fall of 2018. So what happened back in the fall when XRP was that exact same price? Well, in 2017 and 2018, the rest of the crypto market saw a huge boom, known as, the, known as one of the crypto bull markets, Bitcoin went ballistic. Well, it then peaked and started a huge drawback, similar to what we just saw in 2021, 2022. So XRP was at its peak, 2018 had a 90% crash, back to very low numbers along with the rest of the market. But what happened after that, in the fall of 2018, in September, October, XRP shot up to a point of about 82 cents, which is where it just hit a few weeks ago. But what happened after that was that it hit a major resistance. It gave back about 23%, gained approximately 40% of that back, but then continued in a downturn after that as it went into the next crypto winter, as it's known. Well, the price movements of XRP right now are very highly correlated to that. And there's something to be said for a potential warning that yes, XRP's price may not skyrocket, even though it has regulatory clarity, even though it's being relisted on all exchanges all over, especially in the United States. There is a possibility that it could continue into a downturn and not rally, or at least not rally properly until the next crypto bull run or the next Bitcoin bull run, which many people are happening is probably going to revolve around that Bitcoin halving coming up on April 20th, 2024. Yes, that is correct. The Bitcoin halving right now, at least is scheduled for 420. 2024. Now, when that market rally is actually going to start, who knows? Some people think it's going to be six months before. Some people think it's not going to be until six months after. Some people think it's already started because they think the crypto market really isn't going to drop all that much, especially going into fall and winter. Some people think the opposite, but nonetheless, that having is still a very big deal. So for XRP, finally getting that clarity, finally getting relisted on exchanges, there's nothing really holding it back, especially since there are a lot of things being put in place by Ripple, including other countries and central banks, beginning to use XRP as its, uh, as its cross-border transactional medium. But let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. When is this Bitcoin a bull market going to actually start? So if you have some comments and opinions, drop them in the comment section down below. Also, I wanted to mention one thing before I wrap up this video, and that is very soon in the coming week or two or three, I'm gonna be adding another segment to these videos in which I outline some of the good trades or some of the trades to watch out for in terms of where you might wanna be, in terms of shaping yourself up for this next crypto bull run. Because I've been following many people that have been generational wealth in other following bear, in other following bull markets. And the one thing that they say is that you have to be prepared for the bull market. So that's one of the things I wanted to add into this. And as I follow some of the experts and the people who have done it, wanna pass on some of this information that I myself am gonna be following. And so some of these trades, some of these things to watch out for, I'm going to be introducing it to you guys so you can benefit as well. All right, guys, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end for smashing that thumbs up button. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.